you're back. Wow, you made it a little bit further down this rabbit hole than I thought you would have. I think I've been wondering a little bit about why I would have saved terms until episode three. I think that at this point you may realize that there are some different things going on and people throwing around terms improperly that you may not have realized that they were improper before. So now I think I have your attention and it's time to talk about terms. Uh, I think there's a lot of ignorance in the comms world and it leads to people throwing around terms that they don't know and they don't know what they mean. Um, I definitely can understand the idea of a Kleenex being a tissue and that there is some, as you get more specific into things, that there are some implications there that weren't necessarily intended. So let's get into terms. Um, we're going to start in the two wire system. We, uh, there's a couple videos that you may have missed. You might want to go back. Um, maybe I can do a link here if I figure out how to do that stuff. Uh, for videos one and two that talk about comms and then two wire pretty extensively. Uh, but in this discussion of two wire systems, I'm going to talk about the manufacturers, the attributes that I believe make it a two wire system worth calling two wire, and the um, common names, and then maybe some cousins of them. And we'll talk about what I mean by cousins in a second. Uh, two wire, manufactured by RTS. Hope you guys can read this. I feel like it, you maybe can't. Uh, RTS, Telex, Bosch, which are all the same company, old owners, new owners, current owners. Then Clearcom, Coachcom, Production Intercom or Pi, Gringo, Porticom. Um, I also, I want to bring something up. I'm not really trying to tell you what's better or what's worse. I just really want to get you in a framework of thinking about what the basics would be and how your particular example is a blend or a one way or the other of these major two different paradigms that exist, uh, two wire being the first of them. Uh, common attributes. It's, they're wired with a single XLR. Um, there is a power supply somewhere. Uh, both talk and listen are present on that loop type path. Can be a belt pack or a rack mount component. And I think that the, um, generally you'll think of them as belt packs. Unless you're in the Clearcom world and there's a 1U, 2 user or 2 channel station or a 4U or 2U, 4 user station that comes to mind. But most of the people probably in the system are using a belt pack. So just even think of it as a belt pack system, right? Uh, it consists of few talk and listen paths. And my, and I know that there are more, there's going to be exceptions to everything that I'm saying here, but generally speaking, it is going to be one to four talk paths per device. And if you really look at the breakdown of the system, there is no master device. You may have a power supply and there's only one of those. You may have a master station that is a power supply and a user station, but there's not a brain and uh, users. All users are pretty much co-equals. Um, common names for this belt pack, two wire, party line uh, type of topology or um, arrangement would be some people call them RTS. Some people call them Clearcom. Some people call them party line, belt pack, or analog comms. And I think that these things mean more to you now that you've listened to me drone on for a little bit. But you need to realize that people that don't know what they're talking about will just throw these words around and say it's an RTS system. But clearly it's made by Clearcom. 
but what they're saying is it's a facial tissue made by Kleenex. Kleenex obviously makes other things, but we all know of them as a whatever. So the colloquialisms really kind of bother me when I'm in the intercom world because they do mean so much more than the person intends for them to mean. So, um, cousins to the two-wire system. And now, this is just my opinion. Um, I think that the ClearCom Helix system is a cousin. I think that the ClearCom FreeSpeak is a cousin. Unity, I think, is a cousin. And GreenGo is a cousin. It's not a pure two-wire or belt pack system because, well, we'll get into that later, of what makes it a cousin. So almost in stark contrast to the two-wire system is the four-wire system. And you see that the picture changed. And we're talking about a completely different animal. Such a different animal that most people may not even realize that these systems exist. I know that when I was doing some fairly high production stuff with my four, com, four channel RTS system, I had no idea that the world had moved on and was using four wire systems. Um, we'll use the same discussion points, manufacturers, attributes, common names, and cousins for these four wire systems. But I wanna change something about this. It's not really a four wire system. Four wire is more, and I'm hopefully getting some dog listening to the tone looks from you right now. Four wire is not really a system type. It's more of an architecture. It's more of a signal flow. Instead of the audio circulating in a uh, path a party line path, it is discrete audio in and out. And it's a much more powerful system when you have discrete paths in and out. And it generally is in between more complex devices. Um, enter the idea of the digital matrix intercom system. So I don't really like this term either because it's a little bit misleading, but we're, it's what we're gonna use for this part of the discussion. So manufacturers of the digital matrix system. Uh, they're generally the, the little bit more bigger players. You definitely have a shorter list with some of the smaller people falling off the bottom. Uh, you still have RTS, Telex, Bosch. Um, still have ClearCom, Riedel, and GreenGo. I'm not sure Riedel was listed in the party line system. Um, it probably two-wire system, it probably should have been listed more in the Cousins, um, and there's reasons for that, but Riedel is a um, European, I think German manufacturer that does some really cool things, but generally, if we're talking as far as classes, their devices fall into the same classification of a party line system, or a two-wire system, or a digital matrix system. And I'll tell you that Party line is a lot easier to drag out onto a sports um, arena or a theater or walk around with it on your belt than having a uh, rack mount or desk mount um, key panel. So there is very often a two wire extension to a four wire system. So don't let that mislead you either. Um, I'm not real familiar with Gringo. I didn't take the time to brush up on it yet. As I'm sure it's gonna come up in the discussions, I will uh, learn more about it and be able to discuss it, but it is there and it is uh, kind of a disruptor, if you will. Uh, attributes. It's very common to have analog audio with a digital control circuit flowing around a digital matrix intercom. It's just analog audio. This isn't always true. Riedel uses uh, digital audio, um, but even the most uh, cutting edge RTS and ClearCom systems 
use analog audio in and out of their digital matrix intercoms. There's a digital control circuit, which is where the name comes from. The topology is actually a server and client topology, which means there is a brain, there is a host, there is a can't do anything without it central server. And then there are key panels, which are in front of users, which are um, dumb terminals, if you will. There are a microphone and a speaker and a control surface. They don't process anything. They make commands of the server and the server returns the audio that they've requested. It's pretty neat. Generally, they're thought of as rack mount or desk, desktop. Um, I've displayed a key panel here that is a desktop key panel. There's plenty of other rack mount key panels. They generally have many controls for many talk paths. So this would be um, the kind of flagship panel in front of a television director on Monday Night Football would be a KP32. He may have an extension, but basically it's 32 buttons to talk to 32 people or groups of people. That's a lot. Um, there are wireless versions of digital matrix. There are wireless extensions of digital matrix. And in essence, you have a key panel with the multiple talk and listen controls at your, at your belt. So it's actually a wireless key panel, a small version of a wireless key panel. Some terms for this would be, um, and they are still are kind of misleading, the Atom, which is a frame made by uh, RTS, the Eclipse, which is a frame made by Clearcom. Readle is generally a term meant to talk about a matrix system. And that's probably why it got left off of the two-wire system is there, I just don't know of anybody that's running two-wire Readle without a matrix brain to be doing that. Um, it's also referred to as digital, digital intercoms as opposed to analog intercoms, or matrix intercoms, or digital matrix. That's the quick blush to a very, very deep hole and a great conversation, which is digital matrix intercoms. Um, now, the cousins to the digital matrix, I don't know if we should call them really cousins anymore. Let's call them hybrids, because what they kind of are is a two wire in a four wire body or a four wire digital matrix in a two wire body. The versions, um, models of these would be the Clearcom Helix, the FreeSpeak, the Unity and the Gringo, again. Let's talk a little bit about hy uh, hybrids and then we'll be done. Uh, hybrids, like I said, I, want, I don't wanna choose favorites or actually do all of this classifying for you. I wanna present to you a framework of thought of how you see these things. And so this is going to be a huge gray area that will probably garner more discussion than anything else. Uh, why would you call that a hybrid? It's clearly a, uh, I'm not sure it is. Um, one of the things that makes me kind of kick it out of the mainstream one or the other is um, few keys, but many choices. Um, the picture here is of a Clearcom HelixNet. I think that they have two or four uh, choices of what you can talk to on the key panels and on the um, belt packs. And you could have uh, panel one having choice A, B, C, D, and you could have panel two have A, B, E, F, and panel three or A could have F only because that's for the client. You know, so you could have many different choices, but only the ability to choose from four of them. To me, that's not clearly a matrix, but it's also not clearly a party line. Um, you could have form factor issues. Um, and I don't really know what I mean by that, but it doesn't seem to fit as a bell pack or a rack mount. It could just be odd in some way. I think that the Unity is a little bit odd for this. Um, 
the operation and the logic of it still kind of is confusing. Um, and I mean that not in their, they don't have a good user interface, but it's hard to define. It's not clearly a matrix. It's not clearly a party line system. Maybe that's only because of the many opportunities for the party lines. I don't know. Um, discuss. Tell me what you think. Uh, but generally, they don't conform to be clearly one or the other. And Green Go is, like I said, a disruptor in this. And I think that that's really neat. And I'm not saying anything bad about it. It just doesn't fit into one uh, pile or the other. So uh, this has been hopefully informative for you to ask the next question about what do you mean an analog matrix or an analog com? Could you tell me more about what the user holds or talks on to get a little bit more insight into what it is you're going to be walking into um, and trying to interface with? I think as a good YouTuber now, I'm supposed to ask for questions and clicks and subscribes and all that stuff. I don't know how to do any of that yet, but hopefully uh, stay tuned and we're going to bring you some more um, content that will get you more in depth with comms. Thanks.